Amulius, brother of Numitor, the king of Abalonga, drove him from the throne. When Numitor's daughter, Rhea Silvia, gave birth to twins fathered by the god Mars, Amulius was furious. Rhea was sent to prison, and the twins, Romulus and Remus, were set adrift on the Tiber. Before they washed out to shore, a she-wolf found them and nursed them. Fastulus found the she-wolf with the twins, and he took them home and raised them as his own. When the twins grew up, they learned of their heritage and helped their grandfather by killing Amulius and regaining the throne of Alba Longa. They founded a city on the Tiber where they grew up, but they couldn't decide who should give the city its name and rule over it, so they asked the gods. One day, Remus sighted six vultures flying overhead while standing atop Aventine Hill. Not long after, Romulus sighted twelve vultures flying overhead while he stood on Palatine Hill. In the ensuing fight between the two, Romulus proved victorious and founded the city of Rome on April 21st, 753 BC on Palatine Hill. Tarquinius Superbus was the last and final king of Rome, driven from the throne because of his cruelty. He was nicknamed Tarquin the Proud because he executed many senators and refused to seek counsel from them. However, he was responsible for many military successes, and he oversaw the construction of the Temple of Jupiter on Capitoline Hill and the Cloaca Maxima, the main sewer of Rome. After Tarquin's son raped his own cousin's wife, she committed suicide and Tarkin's family was ousted. The monarchy was replaced with a republic in 509 BC. Tarquinius Superbus convinced the king of Clusium in Etruria, Lars Porcena, to lead an army in an attack against Rome to bring back the monarchy. However, they were thwarted by one man, Heradius, who held off the entire Etruscan army while his fellow citizens demolished the Pons Sublicius behind him, the only bridge into the city across the Tiber. a neighboring people with whom the Romans had fought with for half a century, surrounded a Roman army near Mount Algidus in the Alban Hills. The Senate decided that Cincinnatus should be dictator to rescue the army. The day after his appointment, Cincinnatus ordered every military able citizen to bring five days worth of food and twelve poles each to build a palisade. The army arrived at Mount Algidus at midnight and built a palisade that fenced in the Aequae between the two Roman armies. The Aequae quickly surrendered. Within a few days, Cincinnatus resigned from dictatorship and returned to his farm, demonstrating himself as a virtuous and model citizen. The Senate granted Gaius Mucius permission to enter an Etruscan camp and kill the king, Lars Porcena. When he entered the camp, he saw two similarly dressed important figures talking on a platform, and, taking a guess, he drew his sword and slew the king's scribe, mistaking him for the king. I am a Roman citizen. They call me Mucius. As an enemy, I want to kill my enemy. Nor do I have less courage for death than for killing. 
I'll have you burned alive! Watch this so you may know how cheap the body is to men who have their eyes with great glory. Pull him from the fire! Go back, since you do more harm to yourself than me. You are warned. I am but one of the number of young Romans who have sworn to assassinate you. When he returned to Rome, he received his cognomen, Stavola, meaning lefty, and he received honors and rewards. 